112 operators of Reddit. What's the worst call you've gotten? I was only an operator for a few months. The one I think about most frequently was a homeless man who called saying someone had shot his dog while he was away. He mentioned how that dog was his best friend. What sucked the most about this call from my end was that we were getting tons of other calls while I was talking to him. I wanted to listen to him to help him grieve, but I had to wrap the call up quickly so I could continue answering calls. That hurt me. Heartbreaking. People that are homeless are so misunderstood and underappreciated. Pets are really the only ones that see them for their heart and not their struggles. I hope he is okay. You did good in trying to be there for him as much as possible. I'm sure he appreciated that. Did the police go there at all to investigate? 112 Operator The pandemic has increased our demand massively but not for COVID symptoms. Huge increase in chest pains, breathing difficulties and seizures in particular, and so our response times are badly affected. My worst call, had called twice previously. First call was chest pains indicating suspected heart attack. Second was that her breathing was getting worse. When I answered, there was a lot of family members there, and she was having a seizure, and wasn't breathing. While assessing her seizure, she went into cardiac arrest. I was instructing CPR for over 10 minutes and trying to keep all these family members calm to make sure she was getting the most effective compressions. Hearing all these people in fits of tears and the fact she had been waiting for an ambulance for around 2 hours from the first call and sadly didn't make it really made it stick with me. It was months ago and can still hear those screams of grief. My sister used to be one. She told the worst thing was hearing someone pass away on the phone. There had been a serious car crash, and the lady who called was severely injured herself. My sister tried to keep her talking until the ambulance arrived, but at some point the woman fell quiet, later heard that she had passed on spot. Aside from the stuff others already listed, like the CPR calls, or being the last person someone talks to, which personally don't bother me much, there are some that have just stuck with me for various reasons. One was a call from a guy who had just shot his brother moments before the call. From what he said, his brother had some mental issues, and during an argument the brother snapped and started attacking the caller with a knife. The caller, not wanting to die, shot him in self-defense. What struck me in particular was the caller's tone of voice on the call. It's not something I feel like I can properly describe in words. But it was something like complete and utter despair for the whole situation he truly did not want to kill his brother. Another was from an elderly caller that sounded a bit confused and nervous. She said she had been driving for 12 plus hours to get to a meeting at a conference center but needed help with directions for the last bit to find it. The conference center name wasn't ringing a bell for me and after some digging I found out that it was a couple states over. After it clicked and I realized she thinks she's in a different state I made the mistake of telling her what state she's actually in and that was the last bit of actual conversation we had. Everything past that was complete, pure hysterics. I guess she must have realized how much her mind was starting to fail her and just couldn't deal with it. With other hysterical callers, I've always been able to calm them down or at least get a few words out of them here and there, but there was absolutely nothing I could do for this lady. On top of that, she was in the middle of nowhere in the farmland part of the county, so a police response would take a long time on top of the lack of a specific location for her better than where the phone was hitting. Fortunately, some random passerby was a hero, despite it being the middle of the night. He stopped, checked on her, and even took the phone from her to see who she was talking to. He gave me all the info I needed, and even kept her company, until the officers arrived. So while I can still remember the abject terror in her voice as she realized her mind was starting to fail her, it also restored a bit of my faith in humanity at the same time. A friend who works for 112 told me this story recently, a woman called in a frantic state. She and her husband were driving down a residential street on a normal clear day in their neighborhood. When a man rolled a bowling ball into the street, she ran over the ball, and it got stuck underneath. She stopped. Her husband the passenger, got out of the car, and went underneath to remove it. As this is happening the male who threw the bowling ball, was hiding behind a parked car nearby, ran up to her car opened her door, and stole her purse. 
In a panic she jammed on the gas and ran over her husband. She panicked again put it in reverse and ran him over a second time. When she got out of her car she called police. She was screaming but my friend could also hear her husband talking to her. She was screaming and kept saying how sorry she was. He was totally calm and kept telling her it was okay. He didn't sound hurt at all and my friend thought he wasn't injured. When officers arrived they determined his chest was crushed and died shortly afterwards. He was probably in shock when she heard him. The male who threw the bowling ball fled but turned himself and later that day. My aunt used to be a 112 operator in a small town. She said the worst was a call that she didn't get. She worked night shift with one other woman and two calls came in at once. One was a car accident and the one on my aunt's line was a woman complaining that her street wasn't plowed. She talked to her for a while to calm her down, but in the meantime, a third call was missed. It had been a teenage girl calling because her stepfather was beating up her mother. She disconnected before my aunt could switch lines. Back then, there was no voice email, but she called back and a man answered saying she called by mistake. The stepfather ended up shooting the mother and her two kids. But the kicker is that it wasn't until hours after the call, so there would have been time for police to get there if she'd been able to answer the call. She's also not sure if a follow-up call was what set him off. It was a very slow night. The kind of night here people are just mindlessly sitting there waiting for a call. My agency separates dispatchers and call takers so if you're a 911 call taker, you're literally only taking calls. This lady calls the non-emergency number. If you call the non-emergency number, we do not get the location information as we would on a 911. No it's not like the movies. I can not always find you, since it usually give me a general area of where you are. She calls and says she wants someone to talk to her. She seems sad, possibly a little drunk, but not incoherent. I ask her what's going on as asking to talk to someone is usually a dead giveaway there may be some suicidal ideations. She tells me she's feeling sad, but doesn't want to do anything. Once again, we are slow so I decided to entertain her. I'll let her talk to me about her life, her kids, her existent, her finances, just whatever she wanted to talk about. It became more clear that she was depressed. I kept offering to have an officer to come out to chat in person so we can evaluate her. She didn't want to give her address. This lady knew what she was doing and would not tell me she's going to hurt herself or anything to make this a solid suicide call to get officers out there fast. It was frustrating. After talking for 35 minutes, I make up some sort of white lie just to get her address. I finally have it. By now we have been talking for 50 minutes. I'm getting quite frustrated that this woman won't just tell me she wants to kill herself so I can get her the fast help. I actually felt bad having to lie to get her address. Eventually I tell her that I know she doesn't want to meet with an officer, but I want someone to go check on her and give her some resources. She replies with honestly, I don't want to waste the officer's time. You talking to me was the best thing I've had in a long time. Thank you so much. I'm going to go warm up some macaroni that's in my fridge. Cuddle with cats and head to bed. Thank you. My name. Have a good night. And then hung up. When I tell you I had a huge amount of conflicting thoughts, I did. I was angry she wouldn't tell me she was going to kill herself. I was sad her life has been rough. I felt I was breaking our trust by sending an officer, since she didn't want one. I sat there and thought for a few minutes, and I sent up a call for them, just to go check on her. The officers get there with no answer to their knock on the door. They peek in the bedroom window, and she sound asleep cuddling with her cat in bed. God, I hope that woman is doing better. I've taken much more stressful, difficult, traumatizing calls. I have hear people die mid-sentence with me. People screaming as their child lay lifeless, sobbing while their significant other is just dead in the car from an accident. This call is the one that stuck with me, and I have no clue why. I'm not a call taker, but I'm in the same line of work. There are two that really stand out to me. The first isn't a tragedy on the scale of the others, but it was the small scale heartbreak that really killed me. This guy, on his way home from work, saw a homeless man on the street, and it was horrific weather biting cold, howling wind, wet. He brought him in, gave him dinner, wanted to wash his clothes, and give him a shower and a place. 
to stay for the night, the homeless guy was hopped up on substances, and started smashing the place up after dinner, kind citizen had just had his house done up, and got his kindness rewarded with that. Just reading the job, not even being on the call, you could see the heartbreak and the loss of faith in humanity, the other a suicide, they're always rough, but for some reason, hanging seemed to hit harder, and seem a little bleaker to me. This one was a 14 year old girl who had hung herself, and hearing that really made my eyes sting, I had to leave the room, when I found out she had a twin. My girlfriend works as a dispatcher, and I work for law enforcement, but we are in different counties, she had taken a call from a worried father, who couldn't contact his son, the son was several states away from home, and had been reported as a missing person, she talked to the dad for a while, and filed the report and that's the last she heard of it. Well I was in a separate meeting, and a trooper had reported they found a body, and were headed out to handle that, while my GF, and I were relaying our days to each other I mentioned the body, that had been found. After connecting the dots we realized it was the son of the father she spoke to earlier in the week, so not a super traumatizing call, but the aftermath was rough for her. Not an emergency service operator, but, I worked for the retention department for a major cell phone company years ago. I got a call from this middle, aged sounding lady who told me she wanted to cancel her line entirely, but my job, I asked her, why she wants to cancel to try to offer solutions, or to straight up bribe her into not cancelling, and she said I'm dying soon, and I won't need my cell phone in hospice. I had to reach out to my supervisor to get approval to cancel the line for account holder death, and he told me I had to warn her that she'd never be able to open another line with the company. She said that doesn't really matter anymore. I felt awful saying it and told her I was so sorry she was going through it. She started sobbing and said me too. I don't want to die. I still remember how her voice was shuddering when she said it. It really broke my heart. We started talking while I was waiting for the supervisor to do his override. She talked about how she was trying to deal with loose ends as should, could to make it easier on her daughter who had just had a baby, about how she was worried about her dog not adjusting as he was a senior dog and he'd been with her since he was a puppy. She said she hoped it didn't hurt too much before she went. I'll let her talk until she didn't have anything else to say and she thanked me at the end and said she was sorry if she burdened me. I told her it was okay. She deserved to be heard and we said goodbye. I cried in the bathroom for about 20 minutes after we hung up.